Every year, somebody will ask me what it is that I'm giving up for Lent. My answer is always the same. Fast cars, loose women and vintage champagne. Or it might be vintage women, loose cars and fast champagne. I'm never quite sure. My reply is deliberately light-hearted, partly because for most, Lent has become this byword for giving something up. And often it's something that, if we're honest with ourselves, we don't really find it that hard to go without. But what exactly are the origins of Lent? The tradition itself goes back to the 40 days of fasting that Jesus underwent whilst being tempted in the wilderness, where the devil tried to get him to use his power, status and authority in a way that was contrary to the will of God, his Father. In the early church, the time leading up to Easter was also a time of fasting and preparation for those who were getting ready to be baptised. And although there wasn't total agreement of how many days and which days they should be, the tradition of Lent brought these things together and became established. Fasting in biblical times was often accompanied by people sprinkling themselves with ashes. And so it became that on Ash Wednesday, those who were penitent, turning back to God, could receive the sign of the cross in ashes. Ashes often made by the burning of palm crosses like this one from the previous year. So where are we now? Well, a few of us will make do with one meal a day between now and early April. And the temptation is for Lent to be a time when we settle for denying ourselves chocolate, wine or biscuits. I'll leave you to decide how challenging those things are. But when we go back to scripture, we find that the purpose of fasting is to attune and align ourselves more closely with God. And anything we choose to do should be done humbly and without show. In recent years, the church has begun to discover that the journey of Lent might not just be about giving something up, but taking something up. Simple but unannounced acts of kindness, perhaps a closer attention to prayer, or engaging with study of the Bible. Because repentance means to turn back to God and to engage with things that can't always be seen or measured. It's about a whole lot more than giving up vintage cars, fast women and loose champagne.